Good afternoon, everybody. The wind is blowing out towards center field, which means it is perfect for a home run derby here for Brookline Youth Baseball. Mason Stealth alongside Dave Fleming. ASPN HD here for you. And the kids are just about ready to go. We're going to meet them in just a minute. But the weather is cooperating for the most part. But ultimately, this is just a day to have fun, sit back, and watch a couple of kids try and jack one over the fences. And what everybody, every kid's dream, right? Yeah. I used to sit there at night thinking about trying to hit home runs out of the park. I couldn't do it, but I know these kids can. And right uh, with the wind blowing out, this should be good. This is going to be fun. We see the kids um, just like uh, grabbing bats and ready to go, and they want to get up there and hit. Yeah, and then after this home run derby, we'll have the all-star game coming in a couple of hours. And it's really interesting to see all these players who are coming out there nominated by their teammates. It's not their coaches. It's not their family members. It's them trying to pick and choose to see who's going to go out there and represent their team. And it's been a great season so far, and it's going to be a great opportunity to see these kids swing. Yeah, it's so nice. And they had uh, each team has there's four selections to the all-star team. Two of them are in the home run derby. Maybe they'll overlap a little bit. But uh, so nice that the exactly that their peers uh, voted them in. That's really great. And we will have our first set of swings coming up in the home run derby. Just a moment. We'll take a quick pause, and then we will have our public address announcer come out and introduce these outstanding young players. Do you want to go grab some frozen yogurt tonight? Maybe another time. Thanks, so. Hey, Charles, how do you like your burger? Ooh, well done, I hope. <sighs> I love this tree. Hey, honey. We thought we'd try something new. Family art hour. Come on, sit down. Okay, guys, what do you think? <laughs> that is you. Oh, you got jokes. You're funny. That is you. And that is your son and your other son. Learn about adopting a teen from foster care. You can't imagine the reward. Visit AdoptUSKids.org. And we welcome you back to the Brookline Youth Baseball Home Run Derby. We send things over to Holden Hodgson, president of Brookline Youth Baseball, for our introductions. Hi, everybody. Welcome to our 2023 Majors Home Run Derby. We're excited to have you here with our 12 representatives from our six Majors teams. Batting first is Axel Ham. Batting second, Shua Kajno. Batting third, Danny Carballo. Batting fourth, Connor Chen. Batting fifth, Kramer Toto. Batting sixth, Josiah Kalmus. Batting seventh, Reed Stern. Batting eighth, Bryce Hellendra. Batting ninth, Mikey Sullivan. Batting tenth, Levy Lerner. Batting eleventh, Jonah Cohen. Finally, batting 12th, Bash Landry. Let's hear it for our participants. Good luck. All right, have at it. Good luck. So you hear the announcement of the Home Run Derby contestants leading off Axel Hom of the Phillies. Quickly work you through what this format is expected to be. Round one, everybody's going to get 10 outs, and all you need to do to advance to the next round is get one over the fence. And you can see where these players in the outfield are positioned. They all expect a lot of pulls here from these right-handed hitters leading off with Mr. Hom. In round two, anyone who hit a home run in round one will compete. Again, you get 10 outs in the top four, plus ties will advance to the semifinals, after which we will cut things down to the final two contestants in round four. Phillies coach is a southpaw. Nobody likes to see that in the home run derby. <laughs> <laughs> no, it'll be fine. We'll see if he's going to throw any breaking balls. Or it's going to be like Cole Hamels or somebody. I'm sure Phillies coach is going to knows where Al Axel likes to, to swing the bat, where his power zone This looks like Axel is with Boston Prime based on his helmet. And he's ready to go. And the first swing is a chopper town toward home play any swing that does not clear the fences is an out so that is out number one hey there's one takes that there one and hum is Woo! through to round two that's all you need to do 
Takes hey. two swings, clears the fences on the second, one into the second round. Well, it was very efficient. First round for Axel Hamm. That was great. After hitting one about five feet in front of the plate, he ripped one almost out of the entirely out of the Elliott Field. So that was a bomb. And we saw, uh, you made some jokes earlier about those cars out there in left. Yep. <laughs> and that, um, that was headed there. Axel Hamm did indicate that his favorite highlight of the season was three home runs. Whether that came <laughs> in a single game, I don't think. But, I think of course, the entire season, three home runs, nothing to sneeze at. So okay. in comes Shua Kush now. And he swings for the first time. Anything that he just lets go past, strike ball doesn't matter. That will not count as an out. But he's now taken two straight. There we go. And that, that is going to make its way over the fences. Two for two into round two. Again, efficient. I like this. This is great. And he did have at least one home run during the regular season as home run on the first pitch against the Padres indicated that was oh. his favorite highlight of the season, part of the 12 and under Williamsport team as well. And now yeah, Brookline, always strong summer league teams. Their all-star teams are exceptional. And now Danny Carballo comes in trying to make it three for three, and oh, he rips. might do it on the first oh, pitch. Get up. Almost. Just short out toward the warning track in left center. So one out for Carballo. Skies this one to left center as well. Nice swing. Two outs so far, but he's trying to connect with these, and this one will fall into shallow center. That Three gotta, outs now. He stuck his hand in the uh, the beehive, and that one he's a sting. His hands are stinging. Also plays saxophone in the town Ripped. jazz band, and that yeah. will not oh. oh off the banner. Wow. Everyone in the outfield expected that to Ripped. go. That one, I think, will. Yes. Nicely done. Took a couple of hacks at it to finally get it across, but that will do. And three in to the second round through three hitters. Wow, these guys can hit. Yes, they this, can. This is not easy to do. Um, we know Elliott Field's not the deepest ballpark of all time, right? It's nice, friendly confines here at Elliott, but it's difficult to do this. Yeah. And out there in center field, you see Tommy Sullivan, younger brother Mikey in this home run derby. And Tommy put on a show for the ages last time we held this event a year ago. Yep. 19 in the final round to win the home run derby by a ridiculous margin. Yeah, yeah, 27, which is the record. So we'll see if anybody can do that today. And now here's Connor Chin of the Dodgers. Grounds that one back toward the protective netting at the pitcher's mound. That one's not going to have enough. Gloved out there by one of the Oriole fielders. Give you a lot of pressure. Three straight uh, contestants make it into the next round, and you have to step up and try to do the same. And grounds this one, and right around this midpoint here. Mm -hmm. A couple outs to play with, but just needs to get under one of these pitches. Yeah, he's hit, them, hit the ball hard a couple of times. His highlight of the season is jumping over that outfield fence. Wow. After a Dodgers win. And he's going to need to hit one over the fence here as... Got a couple more outs to work with. First year in the majors, just 10. Yeah, looks like another Boston Prime player. Also a skier in the winter months and fouls Ooh, this tough, one out. Tough pitch, a little frustrating there. And this is hard sometimes, you don't know what to swing at. You feel like you have to swing at everything in the home run derby likely and um, like that one's a little high. Well, you're used to swinging at strikes, and yep. in the home run derby, you don't actually have to swing at a strike. You just have to swing at a pitch that you want to drive. Right. But when you're 10 years old, <laughs> all you want to do is swing at any pitch. <laughs> That's a good pitch. All right. How Takes take that it. one. Yeah, good. Deacon's getting a little comfortable. Good. That's good to see. Now he's taking a deep breath. Yeah. There's an element of maturity to just take the pitches. Just right. breathe a little bit. Right. You have all your friends and you know, teammates and competitors out there watching. That was a nice cut. And that get. is the 10th and final out for Connor Chin. So he will not advance, but you appreciate the pitcher and coach coming over to give him a fist bump. Yep. And now the sprint to collect all the baseballs. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a lot of fun to start, a quick start. And the, uh, yeah, we see some wind up in the trees and it's probably gonna help some baseballs get out of the park. So Axel Hom, Shua Kashnow, Danny Carballo have advanced the first three hitters, clearing the fences. Now Kramer Toto 
of the Guardians will step out. Our fifth hitter will have 12 hitters in this home run derby. Toto, Josiah Kalmus up next, then Reed Stern of the Phillies, Bryce Hellendrung of the Red Sox, Mikey Sullivan, mentioned his older brother performance last year. Levi Lerner will hit 10th, Jonah Cohen 11th, and Bash Landry. What a heck of a name for a home run derby. Bash, <laughs> wrapping us up in the 12th spot. Swung on and missed. Two swings in the first two pitches. Another couple high ones. Yeah. Two quick outs. Nice rip. Tough to really get under those pitches up in the zone, maybe even slightly above the strike zone. Right. Pitcher's got to uh, drop his uh, elbow. There it is. Drop down a little bit. Fouls that one off. I know this because I've pitched many times to my son. He gets very angry when I do not pitch it over the plate. <laughs> He's trying to hit some home runs. They act as if it's easy. Yes. And there is an art, even at this yeah. level, to, to pitching in a home run Ooh, derby. You're good hit. That is just oh, shy. That ball knuckled all the way out to the uh, outfield. And track. the wind has died down a little bit, so yeah. that one might have carried about 10, 15 minutes ago. Not here, nope. and now. Good piece of hitting right there, though. It's a nice rip. We take it a game. It's a double. Out number six, potentially. Mm -hmm. So still a few swings. There he is. And does it have enough? Did, you, did I make it? I don't Didn't think so, it, based on the well, way that he spiked oh, the bat. I see. Yeah, I thought it made that. It's just slightly right. in front of the pitch. Yep. And that definitely would have gone out about 10 minutes ago. Yes, right. Now, does he have the mental fortitude to just get back? Ooh, swings right. at a high one there. Shakes his head. Two yep. outs to play with, I believe. Takes that pitch there. That was nicely. a good one. <laughs> yep. <laughs> nope. Oh, that oh does that have gone. a fair ball? I think it did. Where's the call? Who's got it? Did he give it to him? I mean, I think I have the best angle. <laughs> I think it's gone. I think it made it around the pole, don't you? I certainly do. It definitely landed outside. It was, but I think that's a fair ball. When that crossed down did the left no? field line. No, it went around the pole. Oh, my goodness. We already have controversy here. And that was his last swing. And he say, oh. That hurts. Oh, my goodness. Of course, we're being playful here, but I think that was gone. That was I really do. Wrapped around the foul pole. It landed to the left of the line, but way out in the outfield. That's gone. I think that he. Can we get a video review? We'll <laughs> see if uh, our, you know, Arlen Shostak can get us some video on that. Maybe uh, might have to be later tonight or maybe afterward. I'm not uh, sure. That, that's one of those where he got all of that pitch. Oh, he ripped that. It was a high pitch, and he ripped it. Uh, it was one of the, probably the hardest hit ball of the whole uh, Absolutely. tournament so far. Absolutely. And where we are positioned, it is maybe about five feet to the right of home plate behind yep. the protective fence. So unless you're standing right down the line, no one's going to have a better angle at that than we are. Well, I think right now, too, we ha we realize that there's no uh, – they need an umpire along <laughs> down the line. So Kramer <laughs> Toto out by a whisker. And so I think they're going to turn this around. They haven't turned the cage around for the righties. Yep, there we go. So Toto, multi-tool player, first baseman, second baseman, shortstop, center fielder, and pitcher. Prefers short. Yep. But just barely missing out. So. Well, I think he showed a lot of maturity there. Yeah. Some kids may have thrown the bat. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can George tell Brett. you I would have been one of those. First of right. all, I would not have been in the event. Yeah. <laughs> but if you put me in the event exactly. and that's how I got out, I, I definitely yeah, would, I would not be have pissed. been <laughs> the most well-tempered of Little Leaguers. So here's Josiah Kalmus of the Red Sox with the bright orange helmet. All right. Hey, this different type of pitching style. This one is kind of being lobbed in. Yeah, like a little slow-pitch yeah. softball type of delivery. I don't know. We'll see. He is an outstanding catcher, has thrown four runners out at second base. Wow. And when he switched over to the pitcher's side of things, he also struck out five in a row. So, Wow. So he can do both. He's got a strong arm, that's for sure. Also a hockey player. Second year in the majors says you see him leaning back, really waiting for that pitch to get there. Ooh, took a mighty swing at it, but just tips it off at home. First all-star appearance in this event for hey, Josiah. Takes maybe. that one, but I think just no. got it a little bit inside. And nice rip. We're still sitting on 
That initial group that went one, two, three over the fence. But now on our sixth hitter, still sitting on three into round two. That's the fourth out as signaled by, we'll call him Commissioner Hodgson <laughs> out in left field. Takes a mighty hack again, fouls that one off. Now five outs to work with for Josiah. All right, Josiah, what do you got? He's saying that's a little high. There you go. That's good pitch. That is the one thing with those lobbed pitches is that yeah. all the power has got to get generated by the hitter. Yeah. He's not going to get anything from the pitch itself. Yeah, it's almost like a wiffle ball pitch. But we should remind the viewers that these pitchers are not professionals. <laughs> well, they are professionals, just not necessarily in the world of baseball. <laughs> I'll tell you what, this pitch, pitching is uh, batting practice pitching or home run derby oh, pitching. It's, it's, it's terrible. <laughs> it's, it's so frustrating. It's difficult. Um, I remember we, I played with uh, Brookline Youth Baseball, one of the coaches. He could pitch to anybody, but his own son, he would hit every time. <laughs> it was hilarious. Hey, it was a good hit. Yeah, in on the hands a little bit, though, yeah. out towards center. And after the first no, no. three advance to the next three, whether by out or just by the whisker of a foul pole, have been denied entry into round two. So now we move on to our Phillies hitter. Yeah, it looks like um, it's okay. Reed back to uh, Stern. Okay, for the Phillies. Back to the Phillies coach, good pitcher. The lefty gives it a little juice on there. That's nice. So you get the pitcher for the Phillies, throwing to the Philly hitter back out the south paw on the hill. Multi-sport athlete, soccer, basketball, and of course baseball. Looks like Reed's jumping out a little bit too soon, but that's a natural expectation in a bit like this. Just thinking that. That's a nice rip. I, I'm impressed that no one has swung so hard that they have either fallen down or missed the ball entirely, which is exactly <laughs> right. what I would do. Exactly, right. Hey, it's a good rip. I don't know if it's going to make it. It's probably the first pitch we have seen taken by any stretch of the imagination <laughs> the other way. <laughs> I think that one ended closer to right center than left center. That's another one, a little high pitch. Nice right. snag out there yes. short. Good eye there. Pitcher, first baseman, and shortstop by train, although he prefers either being on the hill or playing out at short. Grounds that one too short. Another nice hit. Yeah, absolutely would have been yeah. a no doubt single. Coach encouraging. There you go. Good rip. Had to go up and get that one. It doesn't yeah. clear the fences, but. Well, one to go. Can Stern hit one out on the final pitch? No, he cannot. All right. Good showing, though. Some good rips, a couple of good ones to the outfield. So at this point, with just three into round two, my understanding would be that we would essentially be able to skip round two and we'd move right on to what would be a semi-final round. Well, we get a few to go. We know we have yep. uh, a couple big names coming up. Yep, so now it's Bryce Hellendrung of the Red Sox. Helen Drung does have a home run during the regular season. Hit that against the Padres, which he said was his highlight of the season so far. Yeah. And I appreciate his hobbies, most of them to be expected. You've got <laughs> soccer, you've got basketball, runs track and cross country in addition to baseball, and then he likes chess. Hey, all right. That's very cool. Second year in the majors for Bryce, and another all-star appearance to his tally. So Taking another, a couple pitches. Yeah, new, new pitcher, Red Sox coach. Yeah. 
trying to strike that balance between the speed that we saw the left-handed Phillies hurler throwing and yep. then that lob over that uh, didn't get the job done either. First swing for Helen Drung is hit toward the left-hand side for an out. Couple good swings. Like that Mariucci bat, the good one. Ooh, it's almost, he's getting there. Yeah, off the end of the bat. Shows you how shallow these fences are here, right off the end of the bat. If he gets that one yeah. any better, it's definitely out of here. Yep, that's a nice cut. He got his arms out there, could play in the outfield. Yeah. All our hitters so far have hit from the right-hand side. Yep. I wonder if Mikey Sullivan's a uh, lefty like his brother. Let's see. He'll be due up next, I believe. And that one in on the hands, driven out toward deep left left center, but again, just shy of the fences. Yeah, good hit. He pulled his hands in nicely. Takes that pitch low and outside. And this one tattoos, but well foul. Again, we will have the all-star game to follow. It'll be a six-inning game, and Lots more fun here as probably more and more fans are able to get out of work a little bit early. Final couple of outs here for Helen Drung. Inside takes that one yeah, wisely. Good, good take. Favorite position is as a pitcher. That's just tricky again. This this uh, pitchers are kind of coming in and dropping and oh almost that time I thought it was going to be going. Well, that's the other thing. When you're not throwing too hard, then the wind can take the pitch a little bit and make it wobble and knuckle. Well, all right. All right, and now it Hi, is Mikey Sullivan. Has huh. some huge shoes to fill. He's not a lefty like his brother. He's got some huge walk-up music as well. Yes, that's he does. Ice. Wow, and the kids pick their own walk-up music, which is, of course. Which is cool. Another Boston Prime player. His highlight of the season is putting the run Barrero on his teammates. And I don't know if that's just something I don't understand or a cliche that I am not in the know about, but. Well, I'm with you. <laughs> and I don't either. Uh, Mikey's mom on the mound fixing the, uh, the screen, as you can see there. She pitched last year to, uh, to Tommy when he hit the 27 home runs. Oh, this kid can rip. You can just see it. Hasn't hasn't touched one off yet, but you know it's coming just based on that last swing. Yeah, wide stance. Got to time that step forward. And oh, there you go. Thanks, Mom. <laughs> we'll get out of here. Oh, yeah. Nice pitch. Good rip. Took yeah, a couple of swings to get in rhythm, but. Yeah, you can see it's a matter of time. That one. Mikey Sullivan joins Hom, Cashno, and Carballo in what is currently a four player semifinal. Again, if we have any more than four that advance to the next round, then we will have a second, third, and fourth round. So, with Sullivan joining that group, here is Levi or Levy Lerner. Yep. Oh, the Orioles. Hit the pitcher on the foot. His positions played is listed as everything but catcher. <laughs> well, Levy's probably has to do relax a little bit. He's, there he goes. Now he's in the group. Hey, he, these pitchers are coming quick fire. I know. True. I wonder if they get a timeout like the pros do. Loves playing football, but also loves his Xbox, which <laughs> most 10 to 12-year-olds do. Probably a bad Player. Loves any opportunity he can to pitch. That's his highlight of the season is any time he's gotten a chance to be on the pitcher's mound. And Lerner. Is he any left? Uh, I don't think there was a pitch he didn't swing at. Right. <laughs> and that will bounce out towards short. Solid contact, but yep, that's it. Okay. All right. So. Down to our final couple of hitters here, Jonah Cohen and then Bash Landry. Trying to guarantee one additional round here. As right now we have four hitters who have advanced to the next round.
Cohen, a singer as well, oh. in addition to being an outstanding basketball and baseball player. And he liked what he saw from <laughs> Mrs. Sullivan yes, out there. That's right. is she's going to take the hill here and continue to pitch to this Padre hitter. Yeah, she may have a new job. If I was in the uh, on deck, I would be. I'd want Mrs. Sullivan as well. Yeah. Trying to join his fellow Padre in the next round, and those Padres sponsored by the Sweet Spot this year. I can imagine that that would be the type of place you go after an All-Star game. Yeah. Head out to the Sweet no Spot. Question. You got one team, at least one team, that's sponsored by a pizza parlor, and <laughs> then you got the Sweet Spot. So I, I see no reason why you wouldn't go for pizza and then for ice cream. Exactly. Halfway through. Prefers first base, can also play shortstop, Mr. Cohen. Oh, that's ripped. And that's got a chance. See that's ya. gone. Woo. Nicely Five done. into the next round, so there will be a second round here. As with one hitter to go, Axel Hom, Shua Kashno, Denny Carballo, Mikey Sullivan, and Jonah Cohen have advanced to round two. Here is Bash Landry, and he looks like he can bash. Absolutely, and so far the best name. Absolutely, and rounding out our team of 12, Landry part of the regular season champion Orioles team. And we'll talk a little bit more about the different teams featuring in this league and where everybody was through the regular season as we go through the All-Star game, but Landry, Swing in for the fences, misses that one. Yeah, Pino's Pizza is exceptional. <laughs> it really yeah, is. It's, 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 Swing and a miss. A little ahead of these pitches. They're a yeah. little low and away, which when you're trying to pull as a right-handed hitter. There's an ice cream truck that's made its home out in left center. <laughs> See if Bash can knock it into the ice cream truck. That would be a good promotion. That would be a fantastic promotion. Down to the final four outs of this first round for Landry. That's a nice rip. And does that have enough? No. Again, he can sneak one around that left-hand foul pole. Takes a pitch there. Knows that he's running out of outs, so wants those pitches right in the wheelhouse. Yeah, he's getting under that a little bit. I know he's trying to jack one out of here. Final couple of outs. Good hit. As this one ripped down the left field line and has one more out to work with. And oh, he, he ripped rips it. Rips one, Woo. but not high enough. And that will bring the first round to a close. So five hitters advance to round two. And again, we will do this traditionally. Actually, we have one more Philly hitter. We actually okay. flipped things around, I believe. So Reed Stern hit seventh. And now I believe we're going to go back up to what was originally scheduled to be our seven here, Dino Panza. Ah. No, no. Uh, it's Tom right there. Oh. This is round two. So no break in between rounds one and two. My apologies. Axel Hom, Shua Kush now, Danny Carballo, and then Mikey Sullivan and Jonah Cohen advancing to round two. And now we will play what used to be the traditional format in Major League Baseball. You get 10 swings, and now it's how many can you rack up over the course of those 10 swings. At this point, of course, Major League Baseball has gone to the timing format to speed things up a little bit. But here, for anyone in this group of five in particular, yeah. they can not just go for one. They can go for multiple. It took Hom, I believe, two or three swings to mash one out as he led things off. And he's going to be by far the most well-rested of this group as well. Oh. That one hit a, up. a mile into the air. Yeah, You can see he can get under that pitch. And if he connects with them, all those cars out in left field are in trouble. <laughs> we talked about. Young Mr. Sullivan last year, he was pinging the houses out there, not just the cars. Wow. Hom is 
taking some huge hacks at it. Third year in the majors for the 12 year old as that one would have been a double. Catching some chalk down the left field line. Has five outs to work with. Still looking for his first home run. It would take him th two pitches the first round or three pitches? Yeah, two or three pitches. Yeah. The first three hitters got out of the batter's box quickly. Yeah, we had three home runs and you know, under 10 pitches it seemed like. But now just three outs, I believe, left to work with for Hom. That's eight outs now. Yep. Just this has not be been it. able to connect with one. Coach is saying, deep breath, you got this. Now again, there are five hitters in this round. Four will advance to round three. So even though Hom does not hit a home run, it is possible for someone else in this round to also fail to hit a home run, in which case things get a little bit more interesting. We don't have a tiebreaker rule for round two. That said, if there were any ties, those would have advanced. So we'll have to see exactly how they order things if Hom and any of the other hitters fail to catch one mm -hmm. in this second round. So Hom gives way to Kashnell. Good take. Kashnell yeah. with a specialty pitcher. We only saw him pitching to Kashnell. Right, well, just a couple of pitches required. Bends down and gets under that one. Comes out by us. This is Dad out in the mound. Hey, he's trying to get us again. I don't know what's going on. Nice catch behind us. Cash now again gets under it, pops it up right at home plate. Get a little bit further into this strike zone for him to drive it so he's not leaning forward. That's a little better. There we go. Still looking for our first home run of the second round. and There's a rip. Not going to get up, though. Every pitch that doesn't get out keeps Axel Hom alive. Shua continues to wait for that pitch that he can really pummel. That one he Rips. hits, but again, doesn't get under it. And so two for two in terms of still waiting for that first home. Oh, no, maybe he has another he out has. to play with. Yeah, I think he has more. Might have one more out. And that's, again, not going to clear the fences. And now right. Shua's day, at least for this round, is done. So. That brings up Danny Carballo. And he knows that all he needs to do is hit one home run and he has advanced to the semifinal round. Yeah, Carballo, another Dodger. Watched him, I believe we saw him last year. And um, he's a catcher, correct? He can do a lot of things. Yeah, actually. Pitcher, catcher, shortstop, center fielder. Ooh, nice swing. Also a trading card collector, oh, loves good. his sports cards, and plays saxophone in the town jazz band. All right. There it, oh, thought that was going to be it. That was yeah, a good pitch. in on the hands. He has a nice cut. I like how he brings yep. his hands in. A lot of people, do, a lot of kids won't do that at this age. And again, waited on it. Yeah, he's wait, he's got the, t the timing yeah. down. He's just got to... Get that one over the heart of the plate and onto the barrel of the bat. There's that the barrel. might do it. Yep. Oh, oh wait, that's no, it's that's robbed. gotta be gone. And how was the ruling on that? It's gone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh wow, he made he saved the uh, brought the home run back like Griffey Jr. <laughs> the Philly fielder. No, he already called the home run. Hey, well, yep. why not just take it, put it up in the wind? Nope. That uh, I saw it was already called. Now the uh, so that commissioner called it. So that's one home run. So Carballo no. has advanced, and now he's trying to set a mark. The fielders cannot prevent <laughs> a home run <laughs> all as much Ooh, as they there would goes. try. No one's going to get that one. 
That did not get over. I'm sorry. No. I thought that was up. Now, the wind has switched direction yeah. on us, and now you see oh, right. when the camera pans to the right that the banners are actually blowing in. Yeah. Yeah, with some weather around here, it looks like. Some swirling wind. We are fortunate that we were able to have this event today. If we went off of the forecast that we saw last night, this was potentially in some doubt. We still might have some rain and maybe even some light thunderstorms in the area later on tonight, but we should be able to get both the Derby and the All-Star game in, but you can certainly feel that there is some weather brewing. This is the last one, down to one more out. But Carballo has already done what he's needed to do. He technically did not clear the fence, <laughs> but it was ruled a home run as the Philly fielder robbed him out in left center. <laughs> but that is enough yep. to guarantee his spot in the next round. So Carballo is through. Nice to see the other competitors come out and congratulate the, uh, each other, one another. But you can still see he wasn't too pleased with no. the fact that he didn't actually hit it out <laughs> of the ballpark. <laughs> so that leaves Cohen. Along. Mikey Sullivan, because yep. you know if you hear uh, Vanilla Ice, it's got to be Mikey Sullivan. That's exactly right. So <laughs> here is Mikey Sullivan. And again, here comes Mom back out. Mrs. Sullivan only threw to two hitters, both knocked one out of the fences. Yeah, she's doing the best of anybody so far. Yeah, she's two for two. Right. And so, again, not sure exactly what would happen if both Sullivan and Cohen both homered. Because if right. they both homered, then we'd have three guaranteed. And yep. logic would dictate we might have a swing off potentially between Hom and Cash now. But we could also just have three advance to the next round and duke it out for two spots in the final two. So, yep. We'll have to see exactly how they play it, but we do know that Carballo has advanced, and now it's the turn of the two Padre hitters. Oh, ripped. That one high in the air, and it's gone. gone. Right out toward his dad in left field. I can see out there behind the left field fence. So Sullivan, wasting no time, takes one pitch. Yeah, he's, and uh, Mom asking for a ruling. Does he keep hitting? Yes, he does. Yep. He's going to try to... Get as many as you can here. Ripped. Yep. So trying to set the round lead. So we have Jonah Cohen who will wrap us up in this second round to follow. As the Padres look to be the only team to put multiple players into the next round. Oh, nice. Another one gets out of I here. Know, I thought that was off the end of his bat. He hit the low pitch. I didn't think he, I was just saying he's been very patient. And that one, he, hit, <laughs> he took a low pitch, he ripped it. And the mom was celebrating, but he turns to her and says, come on, keep pitching. <laughs> I'm in a zone. That's right. That looks like a good one. We are back on that. Here you go. Right. Get up, get up. And out, <laughs> over his brother's head in center field and out of here. Oh, get up, get up. Just quite. off the base of the fence. Now this is all for show. He's into the next round. And again, the home runs do not accumulate. So he'll be into the next round and he'll start over. But he has certainly set himself as potentially the running favorite. Yep. Oh, oh boy. That's out. And you hear the age-old question from the peanut Ooh, gallery. There it goes. Why are you so good? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ripped. Five home runs now. Mikey Sullivan. The wind is whipping, and Sullivan is just dispatching these. He's got to keep going. Yeah, mom's. Uh, are they going to say he's already through? I guess so. I guess he's going to take his five and... and Head to the bench. That's what I would do too. If, yeah. if I if I bashed sure. five, you, you don't right. you, you no. don't want to show any. No, <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what mom was saying. Like, come on, you bro. Well, mom's got another hit hitter to deal with because right, you get the, you got <laughs> Cohen coming up now. So, Carballo and Sullivan have 
both hit home runs to guarantee themselves a spot in the next round, and now Cohen tries to join them. Now, Jonah Cohen took the longest of our hitters to reach this round to get one over the fence, but once he got one, it was a no-doubter. Yep. Ooh. Probably didn't need to swing at that one. Nah, four quick ones. I like this. It's actually good as shoes untied because I wish, you know, at this age, it's hard to step out and take a deep yeah. breath. See how far back in the batter's box he's standing, trying to wait on that pitch to then pull and drive. Not much on these so far. I think no, that's he the one the he wanted. Yep, yep. We know he can do it. Did it the first round. Looks like he's taking a big step. He's kind of getting the bats kind of rounded a little bit. Yep, and that's so. what's causing that severe backspin pop-up. There's one. That was a nice, uh, nice swing. But still playing with fire here as he tries to join the other two in the next round. That's a good one. He's down to one, I believe. Two outs to go, rather. And again, we're uncertain if he does not hear it, clear the fences here, would we go right to the final round between Sullivan and Carbaya, or would we have a swing off to guarantee the final two into the next oh, round? Oh, maybe a chance. Could it go the other way? Oh, no. dramatic on that last chance. One hops nice the fence. Nice shot at it, though. Good try. And so only two hit a home run in this round. So we'll have to see exactly what the game plan is. Do we have three hitters compete for two spots, or do we have two hitters compete for a championship round and we will skip a semifinal? Well, let's hear the commissioner. You can see the commissioner walking across the mound right now. Here we go. We're going to get the ruling. And they will skip right to the finals. 15 outs in this round. Okay. That, we could be here forever if Sullivan <laughs> continues to swing like he did in that last round. And that's right. That's not to take anything from Carbio. If no. he gets hot, okay, it took him some time to finally clear the fence. And again, he did technically clear it. It's right. The Philly outfielder robbed him that at the hilarious. fence. But it was enough to get him the ruling from the commissioner that it would have eclipsed the fence and gone out of here. This is great. Here, let's go, Danny and Danny. Yep. You saw the picture of him saying, "Okay, guys, <laughs> let's chill. I gotta hit some. I gotta concentrate here. I need to hit some home runs." I love this kid's swing. Yeah, uh, a little in a little uh, inside outside swing. He's got plenty of pop in there. So we have two National League hitters competing for this title. Two outs to start. We have the Dodgers versus the Padres in an AL in an NL West battle. Yep. Thought that was gonna have thought that had a chance. This is good. He's stepping out. I think this is one that always helps the coach, I think, to slow things down. Oh boy. Good one. Get up. That get it? No, no, not quite. One hops the wall. I thought that one yeah. off the bat was going. Yeah. Could hear it didn't quite get all of it. Or I mean, maybe you don't need a little bit. to get all of it to clear the fences here, but right. that one. Oh, he, that's he gone. barreled that up. Get up. Oh, didn't make it. Okay. The wind. Yeah. Killing it off again. That he even he thought that one was out. There you go. That might. He's just missing these. You can just hear it. This is this is agonizing. He's had at least two or three that would have gone yeah. out earlier in this event. And again, you got to think he has already given two rounds worth of swings in here. So here oh you go. Boy. Finally, <laughs> you can hear the difference there. That gone. is gone. Ripped. So Sullivan is going to have a battle on his hands, and that one he's under it. You never know. It's carrying. Maybe. Oh, not quite. Morning track. The outfield reaction says it all. They thought it was out. He thought it might have been out. But uh, Danny Carballo's feeling it, that's for sure. Oh, he is connecting on these pitches and just good take. A little bit unlucky. He does have one on the board. And again, it's 15 ounce in this final round. But can Carballo put up a couple of more that Sullivan will then have to chase? Yeah, he's going to need a couple more. Seems. Way Sullivan swung in that last round. And again, he didn't even have to complete the round because right. he had already put up five and stopped there. 
All right. Pitch. Coach getting a little wild. <laughs> <laughs> you see the smile on the face. Yep. Tattoos that one to short. Again, nope. gets under it. It's not going to have enough, I don't think. Nope. nope. Takes, takes a deep breath. Off the end of the bat yeah, that time. Yeah, I can just hear it. We anticipated having potentially some breaks in between the rounds, but these guys are coming at it rapid fire. And okay. so Carballo clears the fence once. And that means that Mikey Sullivan is going to have 15 swings to hit two homers. Well, trying to keep it in the family. His brother won it last year. And both times with mom on the mound, potentially. That's right. Sullivan looks cool, calm, and collected. Right, he does step in there kind of like a pro, right? He's not uh, going to swing any bad pitches. He's just going to do that. That said, his mom Ooh. hasn't thrown too many bad pitches <laughs> no. as one pitch, one out. And now one home run away from keeping this, as Dave said, in the family. It's going to be a tall task to do what his brother did last year, which again right. was 19 in the final round alone and nearly 30 for the competition. Yeah, that could be a record that stands for some time. <laughs> that said, a win is a win, and Sullivan. But now he's got to keep his head because he knows he has plenty of time to do it. But each swing that doesn't clear the fences is going to build a little bit of pressure on him. Well, that was ripped, so I think that's a good one. I like how he takes his time. Yes, him on for time. Oh, boy. Here we go. That's going to do it. it. Yep. There's your winner. <laughs> Home run and then jumping into mom's oh, arms. That's cool. Awesome. 2023, 2023 Home Run Derby winner. Didn't have to Mikey wait Sullivan. long. Took a Woo. couple of swings that didn't clear the fences. <laughs> that one rip before it cleared really set things up and a no doubter. Yeah, Everything awesome. he swung at was a no-doubter, it felt like. You saw Danny Carballo come in there and congratulate him, and that's really been great. This has been cool the whole day, uh, all tournament, or all home run derby, uh, the kids picking one another up and cheering each other on, and that's what it's all about. There's, Tom, there's Mikey Sullivan. Yeah. He's pretty psyched. There's his bro <laughs> uh, hugging him as he comes back into the infield. As he should, and again, we did mention that there's gonna be a number of different players that we'll see in both the Derby and in the All-Star game coming up in a little bit, including Bryce Hellendrung. He will be in the batting order for the American League. Josiah Kalmas of the Red Sox will be in that lineup as well and in the National League. Here comes some awards. We wanna congratulate everyone who took part in this home run derby for doing so your best. Back over to Commissioner Hodgson. Okay, here you go. Here for Axel. Great scene. And it is interesting, you look at all the players, and Sullivan 
might be the smallest of the bunch. Right? But that compact swing and just... This is a great scene, by the way, here. Look at this to the right. That kid's just uh, cheering him on. Quite the family, too. <laughs> There you go, there's your winner, Mikey Sullivan. 2023 home run derby champion for Clinton Baseball. Sullivan's day not done. He will be hitting uh. third in that National League batting order. You see the hug yeah. from mom. Time for a good photo. Dino Panza, Danny Carballo will also be in the lineup for the uh, National League. So that looks like it's going to do it for the home run derby. Yeah, so an outstanding performance by everyone involved. But Mikey Sullivan yeah. looking like the favorite, playing like the favorite, and winning like the favorite he is. Takes it just like his brother did a year ago, and now the players will go out there, warm up a little bit, and we'll have the All-Star game coming up in just a little bit. You're watching ASPN HD, Mason Stauff alongside Dave Fleming. Hope you enjoyed, everybody.